Good afternoon, and thank you for joining Microsoft's Endpoint Manager in tune with co-management webinar. Today I'm joined with Jim Pianchi, Director of Microsoft Services, and David Fry, Architect for Microsoft Services with Cortex. Thank you. With that, I will turn it over to David. Good day, everyone. As Paula mentioned, we are here today to talk about Microsoft Endpoint Manager with a specific focus on Intune. Microsoft Endpoint Manager is a relatively new brand, if you will, for several of the services related to systems management and device management in the Microsoft world. Um, what Microsoft did uh, about a year ago is they took uh, System Center Configuration Manager, Microsoft Intune, Windows Autopilot, and Desktop Analytics and roll them all under the Microsoft Endpoint Manager umbrella. We're going to just briefly kind of touch on all four of those components just for familiarity, future, future dialogue if you have questions on some of these other components for a future conversation or session. And then we're going to dive into Intune specifically and some of the features and functionality there. One of the things that is driving these conversations uh, today on an accelerated basis is that uh, needs change very, very quickly. Technology is evolving faster than ever, and it just continually changes. And the focus on cloud services and, and that evolution is rapidly increasing or ex accelerating. Where we may have had some fragmented type of administration and management before, now we're looking at integrated solutions. It used to be closed perimeter, everything on premise and very tightly controlled. Now we still have tight security controls, but we're leveraging more and more cloud services. We used to see uh, less um, regulation and with PCI and HIPAA and um, the GDLR and so forth, uh, in the, the California one and other states are going to follow suit adopting similar standards. We're going to see more regulation. Microsoft's very closely aligned with the with those types of controls and, and reporting capabilities and analysis and so forth and compliance. And we're, we've always had a desire uh, as systems administrators, especially to take, to take things that we used to have to do manually and try to automate them. And from a management standpoint, if I look at it and say, how can I empower my team to be more effective and focus on these important projects that we're rolling out and so forth instead of day-to-day -day mundane things, mundane tasks, uh, we look at op options to automate those types of things. And then we, we may have done everything in-house before in today's environment, we may leverage vendors and managed services and so forth to augment not only our staff but our capabilities so we can focus on things that really matter and just kind of offset that responsibility for that particular function um, to a third party if you will now the industry term is unified endpoint management and in, in the microsoft unified endpoint management we look at mobile device management, incorporate PC management into that same picture, and then also uh, application management is an important part of it. We have quite a few organizations that we work with that will integrate their investment in System Center Configuration Manager, which is an on-premise uh, systems management solution that many of you may already be using. and um, also leverage the cloud service of Microsoft Intune to manage mobile devices. And potentially, as uh, Paula alluded to in the introduction, leverage what's called co-management, which allows us to take workloads and decide which workloads we still want to manage from configuration manager and which workloads we want to manage from Intune. And devices can then be in what, what's called that co-management state. So, for example, maybe software updates are being going to be managed for certain devices from Intune. That'd be one device configuration policies is another where we're transitioning from a traditional 
uh, group policy device management model to leveraging Intune to manage those configuration settings on our devices. And this this slide illustrates that what it was like on uh, uh, on premise only application management, how we deploy the operating systems. Uh, if we're leveraging BitLocker for device encryption and yeah, hardware software inventory, and of course the all important software updates. The cloud attached expands that and gives us some additional capabilities. And then the cloud managed is very similar, but it allows us to go into uh, a cloud only model, whereas today we may be dependent on internal infrastructure, Active Directory, access to other resources and, and, and so on. So that's really what Microsoft Endpoint Manager is in a nutshell, just for review. Configuration Manager, Intune, Autopilot, and Desktop Analytics. It gives us some fantastic capabilities across the board to have, manage our devices, have the controls in place that we need, not so tightly controlled that our users can't do what they need to do, but we're also setting ourselves up to be uh, ready to adopt new things in the future without having to do go through the, the massive projects that we may have had to do in the past to go from one version of operating system to another, for example. Throughout the entire cloud services conversation, we always focus on security and in the endpoint managers scenario, security is a, a very important part of that. This slide here just simply reviews those same four components. And then just to talk a little bit about what's now called Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. Endpoint Configuration Manager is just System Center Configuration Manager with the new name to align with that branding. It's still the same type of infrastructure where you've got on-premise servers, there's a client that's installed on the devices and, and so forth. And the four pillars that we typically work with are operating system deployment, software updates, application deployment, and then uh, hardware and software inventory, among others. Configuration Manager has evolved. It started out back in the early 2000s as SMS. And then 2007, Microsoft introduced System Center Configuration Manager. And then uh, just last year, that grew into Microsoft Endpoint Manager Suite Configuration Manager or Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. I mentioned Autopilot. Autopilot is another service that Microsoft is, adopt, is developing. It's now reaching some maturity in, the, in terms of the number of hardware manufacturers that support it. And uh, what it allows us to do is place an order with our hardware vendor and say, I need 20 laptops and I need these to be delivered to these 20 people. And this is very germane to what we're dealing with today with uh, uh, managing a mostly remote, remote workforce in many, many cases where we may have before had somebody at a depot that would take that device and configure it and then deliver it to the user. In the autopilot scenario, we're able to have that device delivered directly from the OEM to the end user. The end user logs in with their Azure credential and whatever policies we've assigned to that device from uh, both uh, autopilot and Intune are going to apply and the applications we've deployed to that device uh, are going to deploy during the out-of-box experience when the user first authenticates. And here we have an illustration of what that looks like. In the lower left, we've got the PC vendor. We've got our existing PC devices, the autopilot service, and so forth. And that cycle, how do we get devices to the end user? And the, the, the top line is kind of what it would look like if we're going to say, we're going to take existing devices and migrate them into autopilot and intune and then the bottom line illustrates that uh, scenario i just described where we're ordering a, a a device and having it shipped directly to or delivered directly to an employee 
The other component as part of the endpoint manager suite is desktop analytics. And desktop analytics is a um, fantastic suite of, of I don't want to say tools, but information it provides a tremendous amount of information. We can figure a bridge between configuration manager if we're using SCCM on site and desktop analytics on Azure. And so the telemetry from the device is it collects device uh, driver information and uh, software applications that are installed. And Microsoft has compi compiled a database of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or more individual data points related to an application. Say, okay, you've got version five of this application. You're gonna go to Windows 10, you need version 7.5. So desktop analytics is a fantastic uh, um, solution that does run on uh, Azure. And if you're not using it and you're in the midst of, let's say, Windows 10 upgrade project, it's definitely worth exploring. If you're using a system center configuration manager, endpoint configuration manager on site, the integration with desktop analytics, you have a really fantastic dashboard and a bunch of reporting you can do, drilling down to an individual device to see what you need to do to remediate it so that it can be upgraded and so forth. Which brings us now to the subject of the day, Microsoft in, Intune. We talk about Intune. This is, again, it's Microsoft's unified endpoint management solution. It is a cloud-based solution, and we've got two main scenarios for leveraging into. That is our device management and our application management. And when, in this slide it actually puts a third of PC management, but we really include that in that first category as far as device management to where our Windows 10 devices, when we can now treat them as mobile devices as well and manage them with uh, Intune uh, policies or a combination of Intune and SCCM. We're talking about uh, managing devices, the life cycle, the, they're enrolled in the management solution, we manage the configuration, we ensure that they're protected, and then when we get to the end of our, serve, our device life cycle, those devices are retired, replaced, and we, we, we uh, repeat that process. Same, very similar goes with managing applications. We add a new application to the portfolio. We have to have a mechanism to deploy that application to devices and users. And uh, any configuration related to that application, again, protecting, securing applications, and then ultimately an application is no longer needed and is retired. Different ways of managing mobile applications, you can see here, uh, are they uh, IT employer other foreign managed devices or different things like single sign-on are we do we have the capabilities to wipe data if a device is lost or stolen and we'll touch on that uh, when, in, in a minute when we talk about application protection policies we're, we're going to have certain applications that are going to be managed we're going to require for example on our mobile devices that they use outlook mobile we're not going to allow them to use the native the, the native mail application because that's not a managed app. It's, and so if we're using a managed app on the device and we're controlling how that data, we're then uh, having some controls that we in play, put in place, that's how, how that data can be consumed. An example is I could have an application protection policy in Intune under the mobile application management umbrella that says on this device, this mobile device, you're allowed to connect to your corporate email account from Outlook Mobile, but you're not allowed to copy information out of that email and paste it into an unmanaged app like the local notepad application or the nat a native mail where you're going to try to send it off to somebody else. May or may not be allowed to print from the application and so forth. And this, that, those same rules can apply across the mobile versions of Word, Excel, and other applications within the Office Suite. And then we can also manage uh, how uh, users are allowed to consume applications from the Windows Store. We can do them completely through uh, just apps that we manage as business apps. And we can also have some controls on whether or not users are allowed to download and install other apps that we don't manage. Software distribution, we won't go into great detail on this slide, but previously 
Um, mobile application management on Intune was very constrained in terms of the type of applications that we could uh, deploy. What Microsoft has introduced is uh, a model where they're supporting more uh, uh, options in terms of how we deploy them, and they've got a very robust uh, packaging solution or packaging tool to where we can take applic existing applications convert them to the MSIX format that is supportable uh, from Intune for distribution and so forth. So it, Microsoft's made some great improvements over the last year or so um, in, that, in those, well, almost two years uh, in those regards. And app deployment, if we're currently using Config Manager on-premise, but we want to start using Intune, we start looking at applications that we would like to be available uh, to users on mobile devices and um, start packaging those and, and, and putting, making them available to users or devices up on Intune. If we're looking at, well, we've never deployed Configuration Manager, we're going straight to Intune and the cloud-based uh, modern management scenario. Uh, application, the application lifestyle cycle is a very important part of that conversation, how we're gonna manage the, the, the applications uh, which applications we want to be able to deploy from Intune as opposed to a user having to install it manually or desktop support having to, to assist. This slide illustrates uh, uh, the two main scenarios for iOS devices. And, and the same scenarios will apply also across Android when we're talking about phones and tablets. We've got bring, bring your own device, and we've got corporate owned. The corporate owned devices are enrolled in Intune, fully enrolled and fully managed. But with the BYOD, what we typically will see is they're not enrolled in Intune, so we're not gonna dictate to that user who's providing their own device, but what we are going to do is leverage those application protection policies and other mobile application management uh, configurations to where the user has what they need, but those applications are managed. They run in a container that, and the communication is encrypted. There's no way to, to get into that internally from the, the device itself. And if the device is reported as lost or stolen or the user leaves the organization, the administrator is able to disable the account and remotely wipe just the app corporate data from that device without resetting the entire device back to factory defaults. Uh, Microsoft, sorry, uh, Apple recently relabeled their uh, de device enrollment program to uh, Apple Business Manager. But the, uh, the way that the device management works is the same in terms of in purchasing devices from Apple, they can be enrolled right out of the gate into Intune. Configurations apply, applications get deployed or are available to the user to get to. And it's all managed through a, a, an application called the company portal on the device itself, which you can see illustrated here. Won't uh, go through this in detail, but there's lots of things on the horizon where uh, Microsoft continues to enhance the features and functionality of Intune for managing our devices. And Android Enterprise, which is Google's equivalent to uh, the Apple Business Manager, allows you to manage Android devices in a very similar fashion to where we purchased them from uh, we purchase them and, and then enroll them directly into Android Enterprise and go through an entire, the entire device management, or sorry, entire device lifecycle fully managed right from the, the moment it's picked up or delivered to the user. And again, we've got both bring, bring your own and corporate own device scenarios, just like we described with the iOS. And again, new new features and functions always being uh, looked at to uh, make our jobs easier to to manage devices from Intune. And there are other op options from uh, from an Intune management standpoint. For example, Mac OS is uh, supported from uh, 
from the just in tune side of the equation, we have certain things that we can do from a mobile device management perspective. And then uh, if we've got a larger enterprise with a, a number of Macintosh devices, we may leverage a, a third party product called Jamf that integrates with and, and um, enhances, if you will, some of the functionality uh, on over and above, or let's say alongside Intune. Some new things that uh, Microsoft is uh, working on implemented uh, implementing in all three of those West News slides. Some of these have already been uh, already been integrated within the last six months to a year. And Microsoft makes device management available across all organizations. With some examples here, we've got our, our knowledge workers, first line or sometimes called frontline workers, small business, and education. There's a solution for everybody. So that brings us to the end of our uh, brief introduction to and Microsoft Endpoint Manager and specifically Intune. Yes, we do have a few questions in the chat window. And um, for those of you who didn't get your question in yet, if you'd like to raise your hand, I can open the line for you or you can type your question in as well. Um, the first question has to do with um, is there a directory or a place where a person can find out what devices can use autopilot? We're we talking about specific device manufacturers. Um, I believe it was in the beginning of the, the presentation you were talking about which devices were uh, that you could use autopilot for. So it is going to be limited to uh, Windows devices, Windows 10 devices specifically. Um, but if the question if the question is more along the lines of which manufacturers can support it, um, the list is uh, fairly long and it's getting longer very regularly. All of the big names that you think of, Dell, HP, for example, among quite a few others, already support autopilot enrollment directly. Um, so I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to elaborate on it and we can circle back with you. Sure, sure. That's great. Thank you. Um, the next question had uh, to do with, are there any considerations that I need to take into account for shared computers or kiosks that are in my environment? That uh, context would be helpful there, but so if, if we're talking about uh, uh, managing a kiosk machine, let me hit it from two points very quickly. From an autopilot perspective, there is actually a kiosk mode that we can deploy it uh, directly so that it's not tied to an individual user. From an Intune management perspective, we can have completely separate device configuration policies and um, other types of policies that apply specific to kiosks. So um, I can't think of anything that would really, that you can't or can or cannot do from an Intune management perspective in a kiosk, with a kiosk device that you can or cannot do with a traditional Active Directory joined on-premise type of a scenario. Great. A long Thank answer to your short question. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Um, this other one's a little interesting. So my end users are concerned with having this on their personal devices. How can I help them feel more comfortable that this is a good thing? Mobile application management under Intune, uh, first and foremost, from a, an organization standpoint, and I get it, the end users, they have concerns. It's a privilege, not a right, for you to access your corporate data from your own device. So what do I do? I manage that data and access to it. We're not actually going to require that device to be enrolled in Intune because that gets us out into a little bit of a gray area in terms of who's paying for what and, and different things like that. So uh, what I always say along this line is, here's how we are going to be able to or empower you to access your email and your data and so forth. And those controls and that management is just a box around those things. 
we have no visibility whatsoever into whatever else is on your phone. It's not enrolled in Intune. If the device you've reported lost, we have the capability of removing corporate information from the phone. You find the, you find it under your car seat and you realize a few days later that, uh, oh, well, you can simply just sign back onto your account and have access back to your, uh, your phone, but um, your photos and everything else would still be intact. Awesome, thank you. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. So how does the pricing work? Is it a site license, by device? What are the different options? There are uh, a few different options. Uh, for Intune, the first, the, the primary option is going to be, because it's a cloud service, is the subscription model, which is either going to be direct from Microsoft, and I'll circle back to that in a second, or it's going to be through a uh, cloud service provider, which Cortec is a leading cloud service pro provider here in the United States. Um, if it's a larger organization, a lot of times those licenses are it's still going to be a cloud-based license, but the uh, the model is it's part of a enterprise agreement with Microsoft, which a lot of times if you, you've got a mixture under an enterprise agreement today with some cloud type uh, licenses and some other types of on-premise server licenses and so forth. All right, thank you. Um, I'm just looking down here. I'm uh, trying to look for some that we have not covered already. Um, I'll ask this one. So um, I'm looking to do Intune and trying to decide on my pilot. What considerations do I need to have in place to choose the right users to start with? That's a really good question. So um, users for a pilot, if it, when we're framing a project for something very similar, we'll typically look to identify users or ask you to identify users that are representative across business units in the environment. So we've gone, if we're at pilot phase, we've already made, potentially done a, a little bit of a proof of concept. It's brand new technology. Here's, here's some of the things that we need to do in terms of policies and so forth and what applications we're going to deploy from, from Intune. Um, so we're moving to pilot and, and a lot of times we'll just pick on ourselves within IT when we're just proving this out, maybe a small audience and then the pilot might be a slightly broader audience and uh, maybe some representative users of the different platforms, iOS and uh, Android, for example, as well as different lines of business where you might have different applications that uh, you might be delivering to a mobile device for users within IS than you do for users that are uh, general knowledge workers. I hope that answers your question. Well, that was great. Um, thank you so much, David and Jim. I appreciate your time uh, spending with us today and the people on the line appreciate that. Uh, next week, we will be talking about Azure Foundations with Chris Shelda as we July 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Look forward to seeing everybody at that as well. And again, have a great day. Thank you.